Good morning, everyone. Let's stand together, please. And let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We sometimes are too familiar with Sundays, but Lord, Sunday is a glorious day to commemorate the resurrection of thy son. The crucifixion was necessary for our salvation, shedding his blood on that cruel tree, all that he suffered going to the grave to defeat the grave for us by rising again on the third day, ascending back into heaven this morning at thy right hand, interceding on our behalf. What wonder we have in thy word and the truths that are contained in it when we apply them to our lives. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for honored guests. Thank you for those turning in on the internet, pray that we'll have a good connection. Pray for the junior church children that they'll hear the truth spoken and taught and hide it in their hearts. Pray for the nursery children, the workers. Pray for safety there. Pray for those who are absent working this morning or away traveling or ill. And uh, Lord, we pray now that everything that's done, the playing of the piano, the singing, the scripture memorization, and the preaching of your word. We commit it all into thy will, into thy way, and into thy opportunity to worship you this morning in spirit and truth. Bless our morning service. We ask in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. By your standing, 167. All right, 167, 167, all hail the power of Jesus' name, 167.
that's great singing this morning. Let's turn over to 236. 236. No, not one. 236. There's not a friend like the Lord. Now we'll do our memory verse this morning. Took over to pull, turn over to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter number 73, Psalm 73, 24. Psalm 73, 24, we find it, we'll uh, read it together four times as we normally do, and beginning now. Psalms chapter 73, verse 24, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Psalms chapter 73, verse 24, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Psalms chapter 73, verse 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. Psalms chapter 73, verse 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. All right, you may be seated, and we'll take our hymn books one last time. We'll turn over to 336. 
336, constantly abiding. song here. Let's, uh, oh, there you go. You take your Bibles and find John chapter 21, please. John chapter 21. We now are at the Epilogue of the Gospel of John, 21 chapters, and, and chapter 21 in particular really gives us light on the whole Gospel of John. Begins in this chapter, the outline of the whole book really, verses 1 through 14 we have life, verses 15 through 17, we have love. Verses 18 through 25, we have light. So think about your life. Do you have life? Do you have only existence? Or are you rejoicing in eternal life? Some people, they're just getting by. 
they're existing, but they don't have life. Jesus wants us to have life. Then some people, like Peter, we saw last week, have superficial love. Not really love, it's I appreciate you, or I'm thankful for you, or I like you, but not really deep, deep agape love. And then in verses 18 through 25, the Lord is going to show us the importance of light. Light. I'm not just talking about the light bulb or the sun, but also the light and the matter of God's will for our lives. God gives us light in his word. Psalms 119 verse 130 says, The entrance of thy word giveth light, that giveth understanding to the simple. So when you have no idea what direction to take, uh, Job said, I'm trying to find the Lord. I've looked to my left, I can't find him. I've looked to my right, I cannot find him. I've looked ahead, I cannot find him. I looked behind me, I cannot find him. And then he said this, but he knoweth the way that I take. You see, like an airplane flying radar can see where you're at. Well, beyond the radar is our Heavenly Father. He sees where we're at. He has a map already laid out for our lives. But some of us choose to go our own way. Some of us choose to do our own thing. Some of us want to control our bodies, our minds, and our spirit. And that's kind of what I want to talk about this morning. So verse 18, the last time we have these, this phrase, in fact, this is the 24th time in the Gospel of John we have these two sister words, verily, verily. When Jesus says verily, verily, he's saying this is very important. Please pay careful attention. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, he's talking to Peter here. When thou was young, thou girded thyself. Girded means he dressed his own self and walketh whether thou wouldest. So Peter went where he wanted to go, how he wanted to go, and when he wanted to go. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry whether thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by which death he should glorify God. When he had spoken this, he said unto him, notice, follow me. Who do we follow? Who do you follow? What crowd do you follow? Who's the leader of our lives? Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. So we're following someone. Then Peter turned about seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved. This is the last time we find this phrase. And that, of course, is referring to John, his first cousin. When, notice, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved, what's he doing? Following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee. We find that in John chapter 13, when Jesus was on the last occasion trying to win Judas to himself. And Peter beckoned to John, ask him who it is. And so John asked the Lord, and Jesus said, he whom sups with me. So Judas was put in a place of prominence next to the Lord, sitting next to the Lord. And yet, his final rejection, the Bible says, he went out and it was night. Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, more about this verse tonight, Lord, what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, none of your beeswax none of your business. Jesus said to him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? And here it is. 
follow thou me. Take your eyes off of others, follow me. Then with the saying abroad among the brethren. So here's confusion. What did the preacher say? What was it he was talking about? I don't quite understand, I guess I wasn't listening. Then went the saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Jesus said not unto him that he should not die, but if I will that he tarry till the rapture. If I will have him stand alive for 2,000 years before I come again, what is that to thee? Now John concludes the epilogue, the conclusion. This is the disciple. John never mentions himself. He always speaks in the second person. This is the disciple which testified these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they would be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Our Father, before we say amen at the conclusion of this message, with all my soul, I hear preachers say, I want to help you. Lord, I'd like you to help me, for I can't help anybody. Only you can help us. Only you can reach us this morning. So again, those visiting by way of internet, honored guests, and visitors this morning, and church family, oh God, that you would have our complete attention not thinking about the meal, not thinking about the day, not thinking of whatever burdens or cares that we may have, but oh God, that we would give to you our undivided attention is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, chapter one, chapter one. Do you have life? Do you have life? What kind of life do you have? You look to your right and my left on the wall there. Every time you come to church, you can see that verse. 1 John 5.11 says, and this is the record that God had given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So that negates the church. Whatever church you're part of won't get you to heaven. Whatever denomination you have won't get you to heaven. If you've been baptized as a baby or baptized as an adult, if you've done good deeds, good works, won't get you to heaven. Now notice John chapter one. I just love this book. I read from this book every day of my life for many, many, many years. I love it, of course, reading other portions of scripture, but I always want to read John because I'm a Gentile. And the beginning was the word. Now think about that. Do you love your book? Do you love the book? Do you have a book? Do you love the Bible? Is the Bible your daily bread? <clears throat> Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. Do you love the book? And the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now jump down to verse four. In him was what? What does verse four say? Are you looking at your Bible? Can you look at your Bible? Would you mind looking at your Bible? I don't have anything for you. So all I have is the word of God for you. In him was what? See that? In him was life. What kind of life? Eternal life. So let's develop this now. You get, you, this is a message where like sometimes you go to school, you just have to show up to pass. This is a message where I'd like to feed each of us and I'd like you to participate and help out. I don't want you to leave here this morning like you came here. However, when you came here this morning, my desire and my soul is to help you to leave differently as well as myself. 
when you walk through that door. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. We're talking about life here, and light. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 7. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Who's this? John the Baptist. Came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might what? Believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Verse 9. That was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Look at chapter 8, please. Chapter 8. Chapter 8. And verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am what? I am the light of the world. He that what? What did Jesus say to Peter? Follow me. What was John doing? Following the Lord. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. The world is full of darkness. But you have the light of life. Look it over in chapter 9. Just right over the next page, depending on how big your Bible is. Chapter 9 and verse 11, or verse 5. As long as I am in the world, is Jesus in the world now? Or is Jesus now? He's in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. As long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. Look at chapter 12, please. Chapter 12. You know what we're doing right now? We're studying the Bible. Isn't that great? Chapter 12, and verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth in me should not abide in what? Darkness. Now look at chapter 3. Chapter 3. Do you have life? Do you have life? Real life? Chapter 3. And verse 15. That whosoever believeth in me should not perish but have what? Eternal life. How long is eternal life? forever. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Look at verse 36. Verse 36. So do you have life? Do you have life? Are you enjoying life? How are you doing? Well, I guess I'm okay. Well, how are you? Well, under the circumstances. Well, get above the circumstances. We all get down. Elijah got down. I was reading this morning. Elijah destroyed 850 false preachers. 850. Great victory. He said to the group in 1 Kings 18, If God be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. The people said nothing. And then he did the contest, the great contest. He said to the false prophets, take you an animal, slay it, put it in an altar, put no fire there. And the God that answers by fire, he is the God. Of course, they had no God because Baal was no God. And then Elijah cuts up his animal, puts water, three times water around the sacrifice. And then he prays 63 words. 63 words and the Bible says then the fire fell and consumed the sacrifice. It was a great victory. God brought a great victory but a woman a woman by the name of Jezebel who was a wicked woman the wife of Ahab said a message to Elijah. Elijah this time tomorrow you're a dead man. What did Elijah do? I'm standing for God. I don't fear you. What do I fear? If I fear God, I don't fear man. No, he ran. He ran into the wilderness. The Bible says he hid under a juniper tree. Some of you this morning may be living under a juniper tree. 
Now we all get down from time to time. We get down. We sure enough get down, but don't stay down. You get down, get back up. Don't stay down and don't listen to yourself. If I listen to myself all day long, I go crazy. Uh, because the devil is speaking in my ear. What are you doing up there preaching? Who do you think you are? Blah, 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 blah. So Elijah said, I'm, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. What does it take to stop us? What does it, what does it take to stop us to quit living the life for Christ? Many, you can look at their lives. Where did they go wrong? How do they make a wrong turn? They listen to someone else and they quit reading their Bible, quit walking with God, quit worshiping God, quit working for God, and quit sharing their wealth with the Lord. And they said, I want my own body. I want to do it my own way. Look at verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son should not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I want to get to chapter 10. Chapter 10 last week, I was having a problem quoting this verse. <laughs> I'm just having a problem quoting it. I wonder why I had a problem quoting it. How many believe there's a devil? Is there a devil? Mm -hmm. Are there devils, little devils? There certainly are. The big devil doesn't come after me. Little devils do. Verse 9, John 10, 9. Then says Jesus unto again, what am I talking about right now? What am I talking about? What's the subject matter? Four, four letters, life. Do you have life? Jesus said, verily, verily, that's the 15th time. The 15th time of the 24 times in John's gospel, we have the terms, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are what? Thieves and robbers. That's religion, beloved. But the sheep did not hear them. I love this. I am the door. He is the door. Only one door. Noah, come into the ark. Noah, Mrs. Noah, Ham, Shem, Japheth, come into the ark. How are we going to get in? Come through the one door. Only one door. There's only one door to heaven, beloved. Not through a denomination, it's through Jesus. I am the door. By me, I like this. If any man enter, and of course that's women also, he, she shall be what? Saved. Noah was safe in that ark. Everybody outside the ark perished. Why? They didn't believe the word of God. They didn't believe the preacher who preached for 120 years and seven days. And the people did not believe. 120 day, years and t seven days, and it began to rain. And everybody outside the ark, think about that, perished. Perished. We're living in the time that at any moment, Jesus could come again. Any moment he could come. If he comes the 7th of July, are you going up? Do you know that you're going up? How do you know that you're going up? And the only way to go up is through him, not in a denomination. If you're holding on to your denomination, you're not going to get in. It must be Jesus alone. Amen. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. You see that? You go in and you go out. You come in for feeding. That's what we're doing this morning. We're having a little meal. Uh, it's a King James meal. It, it's a Bible meal. And we come in and we get sustenance and we get strength and we go out. We come in maybe depressed, down, discouraged. Something's happened this week. Something's happened in your marriage. Something's happened in your home. Something's happened on the job. Something happens with your best friend and you're down and you come dragging in, but thank you that you came. Thank you that you came, because the Lord can help you. Now verse 10, I don't know how many times in a sermon I may use this verse, but I love it. Notice, the thief, who's the thief? The devil. 
The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life, and that more abundantly. So, I need life, you need life. 1 John, now go to the epistle of 1 John. 1 John, almost the end of your Bible. 1 John, that's the verse on the wall there, 1 John chapter 5. But I want to read verse 12 to us. 1 John chapter 5. Just love, love, love this chapter. This is the chapter that assured me that I'm saved. Because I doubted. I looked at feelings. I looked at maybe I didn't pray correct and I really doubted my salvation. On verse 10, 1 John 5, 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not hath made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. So here is the Bible, the book of life, the book that teaches us about Jesus. In fact, the Bible is Jesus in the book. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I come to do thy will, O God. He take away the first, then he may establish the seventh. On the wall is this verse. And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. Now, verse 12, there are only two people in the world. Only two kinds of people in the world. There's only two kinds of people in this auditorium this morning. There's only two kinds of people listening over the internet. Verse 12. He that hath the Son hath what? Life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have been written you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. I love this verse that she may know that she have what? Amen. Eternal life. And that she may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. Not in you, not in me. This is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hear this. Is it God's will that she be saved? It certainly is. Second Peter 3, 9 says that God does not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward not willing that any should perish. God wants you to be saved. God wants the world to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world. You can't express the little word so. God so loved the world that he did what he gave his baby boy. He gave his son to die for you and me. A sacrifice. A substitute. Vicariously dying in my place. I deserve hell and the grave. But Jesus died for me so that I could have life, eternal life. And if we know that he heareth us, what's for we ask? We ask him to save us. We know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So that is life. Do you have it? I hope you do. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. How's your love life? Now don't go, to the, don't go to the gutter. Don't let your mind go to the gutter. How is your love? You see, most love is lust. We can say to someone, I lust you. I don't love you, I lust you. How do we know that? Ammon lusted after his sister Tamar. I just love her. I'm sick of love. No, he was sick of lust. And when he got her alone, he raped his sister. That's not love, that's lust. Well, if you love me, you'll do what? You young people, listen to me. Some guy ever says that to you, first of all, you should never be close enough to some guy to have that opportunity. But you see, love will wait. Love will wait. Jacob waited another seven years for Rachel. He got Leah. How that happened, I, I don't know how that happened. I guess I have to ask him to get that. How in the world did you get married to the wrong girl? How did that happen? How did that happen? But the Bible said he loved Rachel. So his, his wicked uncle, who was just as wicked as Jacob, you know, there's always someone more corrupt than you. There's always a bigger liar than you. There's always a bigger thief than you. Corruption. And uh, Jacob lied to his papa, and his uncle Laban said, uh, when Jacob said, uh, this is not Rachel, and the uncle Jacob said, we don't do it that way around here. <laughs> we marry off our firstborn first. And he said, well, what about Rachel? Well, work for me seven more years. And the Bible says that Jacob said it seemed 
like seven days. Why? Because he loved Rachel. So do you have love in your soul? Real love? Look at Romans 5. This is so precious. Please don't miss this. I'm going to get to your body in a moment, but I have three points. First point is what? Life. Second point is what? Love. Here it is. Romans 5 and verse 5. And hope maketh not a shame because the what? love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. You have to move a little faster. I'm trying to get you out of here in a proper time. Well, we're supposed to have a baptismal service this morning, but somehow someone pulled the plug. <laughs> so I guess, uh, I guess we'll have to sprinkle them. <laughs> no, we're not going to sprinkle them, to be sure. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. What? Paul asked the question, what? Know you not that your body is what? Ooh. Uh-oh. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Oh, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. What you have of God, and you're not your own. Somebody said to me this morning, approximately 5 o'clock, maybe a quarter to 5, they text me, I was praying, so I thought, if someone's texting me that early, maybe they have a, there's a problem, so I better answer it. The person said, I'm at work, I'll be there in spirit. So I text back and said, we don't want any ghosts running around our church. <laughs> a lot of people are that. They are A-W-O-L, absent without leave. And, well, I'll be there in spirit. We don't want, we don't want you, we want your body. Watch your body here. So your body houses the Holy Spirit. That's why when you come to church, it's not the building, it's the body. When you get saved, you become a part of the body of Christ. When you get baptized, you get baptized into the local church. What you have of God and you're not your own. I want my own way, period. I want to live for myself. I get old, then maybe I'll think about it. But I want my body. I want my body. I want to use my body. For you're bought with the price. Therefore glorify God with your body and your spirit, which are God's. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. We'll be in 6 tonight, but Galatians 5. Verse 15. Have you bitten anybody lately? Huh? Have you bitten anybody lately? My mother was Italian, Sicilian, and when she'd get mad at this kid, she'd go like this. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so, we were bad. <laughs> but notice what the Bible says. Verse 15, Galatians 5, 15. But if you bite, huh? And devour one another, take heed, lest you be consumed one of another. Have you ever bitten your sibling? <laughs> you ever bit someone? I hope not. But we bite each other as Christians. We bite, we nibble at, we critique, we criticize, we curtail, we put down. We ought not to do that. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill what? The lust of the what? Flesh. Verse 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under what? The law. Verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also what? Walk in the Spirit. Now, let's back up a moment. And let's go to verse 22. So the first fruit... The foundation of your life as a Christian, the foundation, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? L-U-S-T? L-O-V-E, God's love, joy, peace, long-suffering. So do you love? Do you love? Let's go back to our text, John 21. Let's go back to our text, please. 
Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Lord, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth me more than these? Simon, you said that you would not forsake me, but you did. Simon, I told you not to follow me. Then I say, don't follow me now, you should follow me later. Don't follow me now. Didn't I say, don't follow me? What did Jesus say to Peter? Don't follow me now. I'm going to the cross, you'll follow me later. Don't follow me now. Why? Because he knew that Peter was going to deny him. Simon, son of Jonas, loveth me more than these? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I like thee. Thou knowest that I'm affectionate towards you. Lord, you know that I like you. Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? Verse 16. Simon, do you love me? Forget about them. Am I first place in your heart, Simon? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Does he have first place in our life? What's the first thing you think about when you get up in the morning? Is it Jesus? Through the course of the day, is it Jesus? Love, love, love. The world needs life and they need love from us. Not our love, but his love. And then finally, verse 17, Simon, son of Jonas, he turned the deep love in verse 15 and 16 when he said, Simon, are you in love with me? Do you love me with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind? Do you truly love me, Simon? Simon asked him flippantly. Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Verse 17, he said, Simon, you kind of like me. You kind of appreciate me, but you don't really love me. And the Bible says there, he was grieved. Why? Because the Lord said the third time, Simon, I'm going to look you right in the face. And you know in your heart, I don't have first place. Love. But now what about light? What about light? We think about light. I want you to think about light. We saw there in chapter 1 of John that Jesus was life and light. He said, I'm the light of the world. He said, ye are the light of the world. Now let's put this all together. You need light in your life. I quoted it, but I'd like you to look at it with me, please. Psalms 119, the longest psalm in the Bible. It's all about the Bible. Psalms 119, please. 176 verses. All about the Bible. I need direction in my life. I need to know where to go, how to go, when to go. I need to know what am I going to do. So do you, if you're honest. So we've established then that you need to have life, then you need to have love, and then you need to be light, because the world is dark. Isaiah 9 and verse 2. They that sit in darkness have seen a great light. Beloved, you and me, you and I, we together are the only light in this world and that's why when the rapture occurs and we're gone down here will begin the tribulation the great tribulation and the anti against Christ will come and he will reign in the world you know the Bible is being fulfilled before our very eyes and we're missing it the Bible talks in the book of the Revelation about seven churches First church we saw last time was, we illustrated from the book of, of Revelation chapter two, and that was the church at Ephesus. It was a great church, but something had happened. Jesus said, I have somewhat against thee. You've done this, you've done that, you've done a lot of things. However, I have something against thee. Thou hast left thy first love. Marriage partners know what that means. Something happens. Something happens in a marriage. 
that turns it cold. Children can see it. Others can see it. Maybe you can't see it. But something happens. Something comes between that love. And the Lord said, you've done all these things, wonderful, but I have somewhat against thee. You've left. You haven't lost it, but you've left your first love. The world so easily allures us, the songwriter wrote, and the world is after us. The world is always after you and beckoning you and calling you and wanting you back. That's the devil. Your flesh is always wanting to be pampered. That's why Paul said in 2 Timothy 2, 22, flee youthful lust. Daniel, two men in the Bible, you can hardly, you can't find any sin in your life, but we know the sinners because all of a sudden come short of the glory of God. Daniel, the Bible says, purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself against the king with the king's meat, music, and the name. Daniel said, I'm going to be for God. I'm in a strange land. I have been taken prisoner. I'm not here on my choice, but I'm going to be for God. And I challenge our young people. The hardest thing in the world for all of our young people is their body. Your body controls you because you're young. And your body controls you. What you see controls you. But Daniel said, I purpose in my heart that I will not defile myself living in this heathen nation under this heathen king that has chosen to change my name, give me alcohol, give me meat that has been sacrificed to idols. I'm not going to do it. God has my heart. Joseph, Joseph hated by his brothers. What a family that must have been. What a family that must have been. Different wives, half brothers and sisters, what a mess. And they hated Joseph, hated his guts. And rather than killing him, they sold him into slavery. And Joseph, at 17 years old, think about it. Think about being 17 years old. Pretty young, 17 years, what do you know? And they sold him as a slave. They put him in a pit. His own brothers, half-brothers, put him in a pit and then sold him. That's why Paul said, if you bite one another, devour one another. And then for years, for years, they lied to their father. Isaac, or sorry, Jacob. Joseph's dead. Look at here's his coat of many colors. You know it's very hard in families. You have more than one or two children not to show favoritism. It's really hard, and the kids get it. Not to show favoritism. Oh, here's the new baby. Oh my goodness. Here you were the firstborn and you had nothing. And then your parents had some money and you had a little bit, your sis, second sibling, brother, sister, brother, they had a little bit more. And the third had a little bit more. Uh, but you're the firstborn. So we think about this family, Joseph now, for, for over 20 years. 17 years, I believe. I'm trying to do this math in my brain right now. They lied to their papa. All those years, Jacob thought Joseph was dead. But God was moving his man. See, God always has a man or a lady that he wants to use. And God was working in young Joseph's heart. And Joseph could have complained, criticized, but no, he took it. Sold as a slave to a man by the name of Potiphar, who was a servant in Pharaoh's army and God blessed Joseph and blessed Potiphar's home and Potiphar's wife began to eye young Joseph and she said in her heart her wicked heart I'm going to have that boy I'm going to have that boy and you know the story and I'm not going to be graphic but one day alone with her she grabbed him and said come lie with me 
And Joseph left his clothes. In fact, the story of Joseph is taking off clothes and putting on other clothes. Taking off garments, prison garments, and other garments. Coat of many colors, putting on a prisoner's garment. He left it and went to jail for 12 years for something he did not do. So Joseph made up his mind he'd be for God. Why? He believed the Bible. He believed what God had told him that one day he would save his family. Daniel believed the Bible. Daniel was faithful to the Lord. Why? The light that God had shown him. Look at Psalms 119, verse 30. 130. See it, please. And the entrance of thy word giveth what? Light. What's my third point? Light. First point, life. Second point, love. Third point, light. And the entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Look at Psalms 19. Psalms 19 and verse 7. Psalms 100, Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect. perfect. God's word is perfect. And God wants you and me to live our lives dedicated to him. I've showed us that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord is true, and the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Now, light. Ye are the light of of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. John chapter 12, if you go back there, please. John chapter 12. I told someone yesterday, I had a study at the church yesterday, Bible study with someone who got saved recently, a man. And I looked into his eyes. And I said, your eyes are the windows of your soul. Did you know that? Your eyes show what's going on in your soul. How many of you know you have a soul? You know you have a soul? John 12, 35, and Jesus said to them, yet a little while is the what? With you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While you have the light, by the way, I wanted to read earlier, I won't go there now, but I'll just quote it to you. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Men love darkness, John 3, 19 rather than light, because their deeds are evil. Men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. Stay with me. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be what? The children of the light. The children of light, verse 46. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believe me should not abide in darkness. Second Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4. Please don't miss this. If you have a job, and in that job you work with a bunch of lost people, you're the only light. You're the only light. If you have a lost husband, wife, children, siblings, relatives, you're the only light that they're ever going to see. Your neighbor is watching your life. 
Your relatives are watching your life. If you profess to be a Christian, they're wanting to know, is this true? Is this really true? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, please, and verse 3. If our gospel be hid, you see that? It is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds. Now, get that. Satan's always after your mind. That's how he got a hold of Eve, through her mind had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the what? Can you help me? Lest the light, verse 4, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You and I are to be Christ-like. Ye are the light unto the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither the man light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candle stand. But we know from the book of Revelations, our study in the book of Revelation, the candle stand is the local church. You're to shine in your church, not to bite and devour, but we're to shine in our church, and then outside the church to go out into the world. Verse seven, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of us, notice, may be of God and not of us. Now, this and I'm done, three more points. Number one, how many of you know we have a body? You have a body? So, did you know you're a trichotomy? A trichotomy, you have a body. <clears throat> that body is, of course, mankind's sense. Man sees your body. You have a nice body, old body, young body, but your body. And young people just love their bodies. And that's why Paul said, flee youthful lust. Young people, your body belongs to the Lord if you're saved. Can I say this? We have never in my generation and the generations beyond me have never lived in a generation like your generation. Sensuality is all over the internet. Sensuality is in your school. They teach you a bunch of foolishness. The dress of young people. Can I say this kindly, very kindly? You don't need to be walking around showing your belly buttons. That's not funny at all. That's nasty. You see, your belly button is where life came from. They cut that cord. So Satan has planted now in young people to show their belly buttons, young girls, and boys to show their so-called six-packs. So we live in a pornographic world. Everywhere we look is sex, 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 and the devil has made sex nasty. God said the bed is undefiled. The bed is undefiled. Marriage is honorable in the bed undefiled. Intimacy is for marriage. It's for husbands and wives, and it's to be pure. So our bodies then are our senses, five senses. Sight, that's how Satan got Eve. That's how Satan got David, through sight. And David lost four boys because he looked at a naked woman that shouldn't have been out parading her body. So it's summertime. Take your clothes off. No, no, guard your sanctity. Guard that body. It belongs to the Holy Ghost of God. Smell, taste, touch. But God deals through hearing. So your body no longer belongs to you. It belongs to the Lord. Know you not, what? Know you not that your bodies belong to, the, to God. You're not your own. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're not your own. You're bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God with your body and your spirit. So first of all, young people and adults. And adults, of course, can use their body to be sensual. Again, showing your six-pack or showing the couple of hairs in your chest. Your body belongs to the Lord. And then you have a soul. So now get this. Body and then soul. So is your emotions, your conscience, your reason, your will, your soul. Someone says, well, you got soul. Black people got soul. We all have a soul, not just black people. 
The music you listen to, the things that you like, the movies and so forth, that's your soul. And your soul is housed in this body. And then you have a spirit. Now your spirit, see, stay with me now. Your spirit is how you deal with God. Now let's, let's put an acrostic here. Here's an acrostic. Here's a, here's a screen. At the top is your body. Next comes your soul. And next comes your spirit. That is a lost person. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can know them because they're spiritually discerned. So you're all about your body. You're all about your body. And Satan has so moved it. I remember when we came to town 39 years ago. Do you realize this is 39 years in Fort McMurray? I remember visiting the hospital. I used to make hospitals visits. And there was, this, there was a floor there, a floor there for young girls that were having babies out of wedlock. A whole floor. I remember visiting a neighbor up the street. I was knocking doors, found this family, and uh, they asked me to come back, or I came back, and uh, I went to visit them, and they had a daughter, I won't say her name, but uh, met her, met the family, and tried to win them the Lord. And, and it was difficult the first few months winning people the Lord, I thought, goodness, this is, this is a terrible place. And then I came and visited one day, and they, I said, where's her? Oh, she's moved in with her boyfriend. What? What? Never heard of that before. Moved in with her boyfriend. And how the government has acquiesced to that, and it's called common law. No, God says it's sin. It's sin. So our bodies. Oh, how these bodies allure us. Flee youthful lust. And then our, our soul. Body, soul, spirit. So you see, if spirit's on the bottom of this listing, that means you're lost. But now how about a Christian? You see, the Bible says, and I just quoted to you, if you turn there, it's going to take more time. You want me to turn there or should I just quote it? So Ephesians 2, 1. You had the quickened who were dead and trespassed and sin. I've been teaching on Wednesday nights. I know you hate this, but I've been teaching on Wednesday nights. I know you don't like this, but I've been teaching on Wednesday night about regeneration. You know, the Lord is coming soon. I love you. He loves you. And you don't come to church anymore. You used to come. You used to teach. You used to be faithful. But you're no longer faithful. Why? You got wrapped up. You got caught up. You got caught up with your body. You got caught up with your body. And now here is what you are. And I say this in love, because I'm there also. I don't preach anything to you, I don't preach to me first. So now you are spirit, you're born again. Praise the Lord, you got regenerated. You got born again. So now the spirit and the body and the soul. Spirit, body, soul. That means you're a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian. Turn to Ephesians chapter, or 1 Corinthians chapter three. Stay with me now. Please stay with me. This is so important. I believe with all my heart. You say, well, you say that all the time. I was having this Bible study with this person. I said, man, I love that verse. He said, you could say you love that verse. I love the Bible, okay? <laughs> I love the Bible. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter three. Please, please, please. I'm not trying to be unkind nor unloving. And I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto what? Carnal. A carnal Christian means you're saved, but your body is ahead of your soul. Spirit, body, soul. So I'm saved, but I'm still living from my body. My body is my life. I take care of my body. And I have cravings. And I have appetites. I have things I want to do with my body. Hey, I'm no different than you are. If you think I've arrived, uh, just follow me. Uh, I have not arrived. I still live in this old Adamic body, and I have two natures. New nature, old nature. And Paul said, Know ye not that to whom you yield your members' servants to obey, his servants you are. Sin unto death, or obedience to the righteous. And we get caught up. We all got afraid in 2020. We got afraid with covid and all that stuff, and to be sure there was some stuff in that, but a lot of it was a bunch of fluff. The masks were a bunch of baloney.
But we, we freaked out like everybody else. Uh, Gail and I began to go to the grocery store senior morning, you know, go early, and uh, people have these masks. And people are still wearing masks. Now, I'm not being critical of that. I understand some people are fearful. But somehow, four years ago, Emmanuel Baptist Church changed. The people changed. You got caught up. I was caught up for a season, but I woke up and got to come out of the ether. So Satan is a deceiver, he's a liar, and he wants your body. He needs your body, because someone is following you. Peter, Jesus said to Peter, follow thou me. Don't worry about John, and don't you worry about someone else. Now, unless you're a parent, of course, or a sibling, or, of course, a, 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 a spouse. We're following. The Bible says not to follow evil. Don't follow evil. Verse 1. And our brother could not speak in you as a spiritual, but as having the carnal, even as babes in Christ. See, babies get their feelings hurt. You can be saved for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and still be a baby Christian. Why? Because you have spirit, body, and soul. I fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you are not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal. For where there is among you envy, see it? Envy, strife, divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Paulus, another, uh, notice, are you not carnal? I like this preacher over that preacher. Hebrews chapter 13, please. Hebrews chapter 13. Spirit, body, soul. That's a carnal Christian. That's a carnal Christian. So, here it is. Are you following carnal Christians or spiritual Christians? Now, I know this is a tough pill to swallow. And I know it's difficult for us to, to understand. But Jesus is coming sooner than you think. And I'm not going to stand before him and say I, uh, I sugar-coated my sermons. I, uh, I, uh, I didn't want to offend people. It's not easy up here to preach. You think it's easy here to preach? You think it's easy up here to lead songs and, or sing a special or, or play music? It's not easy when you get in front of a crowd. When you do it in your flesh. When you do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's another story. That is another story. So Satan is after you to be a follower of someone who's not right with God. Maybe you, my beloved, maybe you have become the leader and folks are following. You follow someone. Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. Look to me. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they should never perish. These should a man pluck them out of my father's hand. Now, in conclusion, then, I want to be spirit, soul, and body. I want the Lord to run my life. But there are times when I get in my flesh, just like you. Say, you've been at it a long time, preacher. Yeah, a very long time. And you're really old. You get in your flesh? I do. And so do you. You see, I know better. And so do you. It's a matter of choice. That's why Paul said, Know you not that to whom you yield your member servants to obey, his servants you are, sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. I'm doing the best I can with the Lord's help. Now, I shouldn't have said that phrase, the best I can, because uh, that's not good enough. I am doing my part as a Christian, because when I come off this platform, I'm, I'm a Christian just like you. God has given me the gift to preach, and I, I try to to obey that gift and, and not preach in my flesh and not perform up here and be a clown. But my flesh sometimes takes over. Verse number seven. Hebrews 13, seven, please. Remember them that have the rule over you. Now, like it or not, I have become your leader, spiritual. Someone said, I'm your spiritual leader or your spiritual daddy, or your spiritual brother. And I have a great responsibility to live up 
to that leadership. But sometimes I fall. Sometimes I stumble. Sometimes I get down. Sometimes I get under that juniper tree and, and um, even for a moment have a pity party. Suck on my thumb and say, woe is me. But I get back in the book. I stay in the book. Every three hours in the day, I've been preaching this for months now. Every three hours, I yield to the Holy Spirit. And I find myself from this hour to that hour, so those three hour intervals, maybe something has happened and I forgot to yield to the Holy Spirit. So I'm reminded, we're, we're creatures of what? Habit and repetitiveness. Remember them that have the rule of you, who have spoken to you the word of God. That's what I'm doing. Whose faith, what's the next word? Follow. What a responsibility. Considering the end of their conversation or my conduct, my conduct. Verse 12, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own body, with his own blood suffered without the gate. Verse 17, obey them that have the rule of you. Isn't that hard to do? Obey them that have the rule of you. You're not gonna rule my life. I'm not gonna obey you. I'll do what I wanna do, says the wife to a husband or a husband to a wife or a parent to a teenager, a teenager, a child to a parent. You're not going to ruin my life. I want my own way. I have a little neighbor girl. I used to give her candy and stuff. I don't give her candy anymore. She's a little devil. Of course, they're lost. I prayed for them. The father said to me one day, well, if I ever need you, I'll call you. Try to witness to him. The wife I've witnessed to. In fact, the wife and her mother, who since moved away, came to one of our Christmas services years ago. But every day in the world, there they are. And there's that little girl sassing her mother. Shut up! No, I'm not going to do it. And I hear him in the backyard, and I want to go over there and say, I can't. It's none of my business. None of my business. Obey is better than the sacrifice. God didn't need your sacrifice. God just needs us to be obedient. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself. Here's the heartbroken part. Here is what breaks my heart. For they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable unto you. Body, soul, and spirit. <clears throat> body, soul, and spirit, you're lost. Spirit, body, and soul, you're a carnal Christian. That means you live for your flesh. I do too. I find myself doing it too, and that's why I got to stay right. Spirit, that's what God, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him and spirit and truth. That's where regeneration comes in, born again. Have a new spirit, have a new life. Have the old nature fighting the new nature daily. And then soul, my soul, and then my body. I have to, Paul said, I keep under my body, I buffet my body, I die daily so that I can run the race, finish my course, and keep the faith. Shall we stand together? Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. We're praying. Are you body? So in spirit, if you are, you're lost. You're lost and you're on your way to hell. And you need to get saved. Jesus is our vicarious. The word vicarious means substitute, sacrifice. He died for you, my beloved. He died for you and me. And yet man walks over his blood. Think about that. Think of your precious little baby boy your little precious baby girl, having them sacrifice their blood for me to live. They gave their love so I could live, their blood so I could live. And I just negate them, don't even remember them, don't even think about them, don't even talk about them, just negate them. How does that make you feel as a parent? But how about our Heavenly Father? 
that loves you so very much, more than you could ever comprehend or understand. He loves you, beloved. And he wants you to do right. And he wants his best for your life. But when he gives you light, you must obey that light that he gives you from his word. You must be willing to relinquish your life for his life and say, I'm giving up. Yeah, but what would my friends say? I don't know. Your friends are not going to be with you when you stand before God. You're going to be alone. Your parents won't be with you. Your husband won't be. Your wife won't be with you. Your children won't be with you. Your grandparents, you get the idea. You're going to stand before the Lord alone. And you're going to give an account of your life. I'm going to give an account of how I preached, how I lived my life as a Christian. I'm a Christian first. And I want to be Christ-like. And I want to be like him. And I want to have his life dwelling in my life. I want to have his love flowing out of my life. I want to be a love person. I want love, liquid love flowing through my life. And I want to have light. Oh, I don't want my light to be covered by my flesh, by the world or by the devil. Father, you see into our hearts this morning and I thank you for that. Oh, how you love us. <clears throat> Thou will guide us with thy counsel and afterward leave us to glory. Lead us to glory. Guide us with thy counsel, O oh God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, O oh God. Help us to be the type of leaders. We, we lead someone. We follow someone. Oh, that we would follow you. That you would be Lord of our lives. O oh God, surrender. Surrender. Quit running. Surrender. Oh, that the 7th of July, 189th day of 24, would be a morning that someone could say, I went to an old-fashioned altar. I kneeled and gave my life to Jesus. Oh, God. How wonderful that our recording angel could record that. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Thank you for the attention this morning and the attendance to your message. Preacher and people, we're going to give an account. Oh, God, I don't want to be found wanting. I don't want to be found being a compromiser, not telling the truth, but speaking the truth in love. Are you saved this morning? I mean, are you saved? You know, if you died this 7th of July are you going to heaven are you going to heaven don't think your denomination will get you to heaven you're going to be a Baptist and get baptized in this baptistry behind me 52 Sundays a year and die and go to hell you must have Jesus only Jesus can give you life beloved without Jesus you just have existence you don't have life preacher I'm saved there was a time in my life I got saved. I received Jesus and I said, he saved me. He saved me. And I'm saved and my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven. I know that. Would you raise your hand as a testimony? I know that I'm saved. My sins are forgiven. Heaven's my home. I know that. I know that. Some of you couldn't raise your hand. You may think, take your hands down, please. Some of you couldn't raise your hands. Thank you for your honesty. Maybe this morning your need is to come to Jesus to be saved. And you'd say, Preacher, remember me in closing prayer. I don't know. I have some doubt in my soul. I'm not sure if I died this July day or Jesus comes. Jesus could come today. I pray, oh, Lord, this is a good day. The number seven is your number. Come today, Lord Jesus. I pray this morning. I'm not sure, Preacher. Would you remember me in closing prayer? I want to be saved and I want to know it. Would you pray for me? Here's my hand. I'm raising my hand. I'm raising my hand. Would you pray for me? I want to be sure that my sins are forgiven, that I'm saved. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I want to be sure. Would you pray for me? Is someone like that? Someone like that. To a Christian. To a Christian. Maybe you haven't been baptized since you got saved. You're living in disobedience to the Lord. The like figure went to baptism. Now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Baptism is obedience has nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with church membership, being a part of the church. 
Now, here's my last point. Thank you for your attention. Preacher, I'm saved. Heaven's my home. But I want to start living spirit, soul, and body. I want to be living for the Lord more faithfully. Would you pray for me? That's my prayer this morning. Would you pray for me? I want spirit, soul, and body. I want the Lord to have control of my life. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? God bless you. And Father, I pray this morning now. Oh God, I pray. Oh God. I pray for our young people. How they struggle with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Oh God. Someone would dare to be a Mary. Someone would dare to be an Esther. Someone would dare to be a Joseph, a Daniel, a young Stephen. Oh God, may you have control of this invitation. Spirit of God, draw that soul that's near as hell. Reclaim that backslidden Christian that's living for the world, the flesh, and the devil. Oh God, and strengthen the resolve of those who are trying to do our best. And Lord, we need to quit trying and start trusting more for you to guide and lead and direct our lives with light that comes about by love, that comes about by your love, love, life living in us. Life, love, and light. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're singing number 270. 270, you need to come and pray. Would you come this morning? Come this old-fashioned altar. Let God deal with you. Would you come now? Would you sing on the first stanza? Would you come? Coming, praying. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come singing, coming, just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Uh, how about a teenager? How about a teenager? You're a leader? Why don't you come? Just as I am, O tall. See that? With many of conflict, many of doubt. Here's the struggle. Things and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, for wretched blind, sight riches healing of the mind. Listen. To find, O oh Lamb of God, I come. All you need is Jesus. Just as here's the promise, Thou wilt receive, will welcome, pardon, cleanse, because Thy promise. I believe, O oh Lamb of God, I come, I come. You may be seated. Ushers are going to come now and receive our morning offering. As they come, can I admonish you, encourage you? Uh, Jesus, I probably know this by heart. I don't know how many times I've read this at an offering time. Jesus said, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven 
For neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Talking about life, love, and light. So you give to the Lord, you be faithful, he'll bless your life. C.T. Stead, a millionaire, cricketeer player, like a, be like a hockey fan in Canada, a hockey player, gave his life over to the Lord, gave his fortune to George Mueller, orphanages, and D.L. Moody, and went to China, Burma, Africa, and died in Africa. He said, God will be no man's debtor. I challenge you for six months. Six months. You say, I'm in debt. Well, God didn't put you there. For six months, begin to tithe. If you don't belong to this church, that's all right. But if you're saved, you need to give to some church. 10% of your income, give it to the Lord. Gail and I, God first. We pay our bills secondly. We eat if we have anything left over, and we give to others. That's the order. God, bills, self, just like spirit, soul, and body. So I hope you'll be faithful in your giving this morning and let God bless you as you give. Uh, Gusto, would you pray for this offering, please? Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for the life that you've given to us. Thank you also for this, uh, for provisions and the blessings materially that uh, you continuously giving to us. We pray that we may place this offering and that it may be used for the furtherance of thy word. We ask this in Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen.